not only did I just shoot this intro three times, by the time I finally got it, I wasn't recording. Hey, my first intro for post project. Uh, it's kind of backwards for me to think about, but I've done it three times, so on this same video. <laughs> All right. So the project is done. I was editing the video and realized I hadn't shot the intro. So let's shoot the intro. Ready? Begin intro. Hi hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. I am taking the first slippery step into adding dust collection to my CNC router. Some of you have uh, suggested repeatedly that uh, this was something I should do, and I agreed. But we're gonna do it a little different than most other videos I've seen. I won't be adding a boot around the entire cutter. Uh, two reasons. One, I still like to see the cutter, and those obscure your vision. I'm still developing speeds and feeds, and, and I would like to see what's going on. Uh, in addition, I'm not really concerned about collecting all the dust. Um, I'm really just interested in getting the chips evacuated out of a pocket or out of a groove that it's cut. So to that end, I have decided to use this stay put hose stuff. This isn't sponsored or anything like this. Um, but I'm going to use this much like uh, a coolant hose does on a... Uh, a metalworking machine where you're spraying coolant in. I'm gonna get this <laughs> phone. I swear to God, I haven't gotten a text all day. <laughs> okay, we're turning the volume down on our phone this time. Take four. No kidding. So before this intro gets goofed up one more time, let's get into the video and you can see what I did. I would highly encourage you to watch to the end because although this is the concept, this was not what I wound up using. So, see at the end of the video, there's also some, some <laughs> phone. There's also some gratuitous footage of the machine running and uh, the chip extraction going on. So you want to see that? And let's just go get right with it. All right, now that that intro fiasco is over, uh, first thing I had to do was cut out some sheet metal that I was gonna use as the mount for the tube. Believe it or not, dreaming up what I wanted to do to hold the tube has been some of the delaying factor uh, for actually doing this project. I've had the, the stay put hose for quite a while. With the part cut out and deburred, I rounded over the sharp edges and then used a sharpie as a bluing component and just laid out for a couple of quarter inch clearance holes. Quick center punch, clearance drill, and drill. Next thing was to go to the bench vise and uh, got a little creative with a piece of pipe and some clamps and bent it around until it looked right. It Took a couple of times going back and forth till it got something that I felt would hold the hose without it rolling around. My plan is to use a Velcro strapping to hold it in. At least that's my plan at this stage. I removed the hammer marks and vice marks with a scotch brite pad and then sealed the metal so it wouldn't rust using my favorite technique, ignition and battery sealer. This works awesome. I laid out for the holes that I needed to drill and tap on the side of the Z-axis. That's a piece of half inch aluminum I'm drilling into. And the little block I'm holding is a guide block that my father made ages and ages and ages ago to uh, help guide hand tapping like I'm doing here. I start with a regular plug tap and then finish it off with a bottoming tap just to get the most out of it. Um, I didn't want to drill any further than I had to so this got me a couple extra threads. 
With the holes drilled and tapped, a couple quarter twenty socket head cap screws finished it off. And then I attached the hose with Velcro strapping. In the end, I found that the Velcro strapping just wasn't rigid enough for me, so I switched to using a couple of three inch hose clamps. Okay, it's time to wire this thing up. What I'm gonna use is this thing called a power tail. It's actually the power tail two. And really all it is is a very nicely packaged relay that can be triggered with signal level uh, controls. Uh, you find these, this one happens to be made by a company called Adafruit, or at least marketed by Adafruit. Um, they used to be available on Amazon. There's now another one, uh, doesn't have the tails involved, but uh, does the same thing. Basically just a place to connect a line level signal, which trips the relay and nicely packaged sanitary job for working with mains power. Here we are in the, the business side of my controller box. And this is my breakout board here, so the place where I'm going to want to hook up this power tail that I've got sitting up here for now is going to be down here. These are the output signals on this board. Everything, else, everything up here is inputs, and then the motors are over here. So right now my outputs are only one, and that's for my touch-off block. That leaves two more. There's three screws. One of them's a ground. So what we're going to do with them right there close, Move the camera around here a little bit. I'm going to mount the power tail right here, just right on the side. I was going to mount it on the machine itself, but I've decided I'd just like to soon keep it here. I mean, it can be used to switch anything. So I'm going to put a couple zip screws in and hold this on. We'll run a couple of short wires and we'll see if it goes. These little relays are rated for 15 amps. So they've got a, a stout little relay inside them. And some pretty heavy cordage on them as well. Now I just need a little hole for the signal wire to come through. It's a little deburring, deburring cutter in a, uh, in a handle. Works great. This pin here on the left, or terminal, is 14, and the middle one is ground. Maybe see a little better. So here's my two leads, and I'll connect to the positive in and the negative in. Those are the only two wires I need, so we'll strip these off and shorten them up a little bit first. fire up Mach 3 and configure this pin and see if we can make it activate. There's a red LED right back here that'll go on. Alright, here we are in Mach 3 and we're going to go into configure ports and pins and I'm sorry this computer doesn't have enough cojones to run screen capture because I hate filming a screen. We'll have to do with what we got. Under output signals, because that's what we're doing, 
the board is outputting a signal to something it hopes is listening. If we scroll down here, I set up output number four. I've enabled it with this checkbox. I've set it on port one. And this is if you've got one or two parallel ports. I only have one. And then here you can see I put in pin number 14, which is the one we just wired it to. Active low is off. Remember that is that when it's activated, the pin is pulled low. Well, in our case, when it's activated, we want it high. So we've left that turned off as well. So with those done, under spindle setup, the missed output, or M7 in the uh, G code, is set up to output number four, which, again in that other screen, output number four, right here, is our pin 14. So we should be all good to go. I've unchecked the disable, so those will run now anytime. And uh, we should be good to go. I'll click apply and OK. And now we're here in the debug screen. You gotta hit reset before you can do anything. And we'll toggle the mist and we'll hear it click. Yep. And the indicator down here on the screen says that it's enabled, which it is. And we can turn it off. Just like that. Yeah, let's plug the vacuum in. My plan here is to get it all wired up, get this mount done, and then try it out before I went any further. And the any further is to buy a, a dedicated smaller vacuum that will slide under the table here. Um, but I forgot to anticipate this problem. Um, I don't know why little extensions like this don't come with a coupler. Uh, I've run into this in the past, and for whatever reason, it never sticks. So here I am again. Um, so we're going to do a little fabric cobbling right here to at least prove the concept and then I'll make sure I have the appropriate part when I put the right vacuum on here. Just not real fond of that yet. Mm, that's much better. I shortened up this distance here by cutting off uh, part of this coupling and then I tapered the angle of the uh, nozzle and shortened it up by very little, maybe a quarter of an inch. So let's try it now. A little floppier than I would like, but you know that might be good to get things out of the way. That's hopeful thinking. All right, let's start this job again. It's no surprise that it doesn't do anything when the chips are being thrown out in the opposite direction. And honestly, I'm okay with that. I have acrylic over here on the side, so the only two places it can go are out the ends. What it did do was it kept the bulk of the material out of cavities, so if I was doing pocket clearing, it keeps it out of the way. And I like being able to see the cutter. Um, at this point, I still really enjoy watching this thing and covering up the cutter itself is uh, 
a little disconcerting both from my comfort level as well as well then I can't see it very well maybe at some point that won't be as big a deal but I'll tell you what I don't like is I don't like this flexible hose so we're gonna try something different it's just it was too wiggly Oh yeah, this is way more rigid. Now I'm gonna have the same problem hooking the hose up. Yep, same problem, different size. Well, at least that one fits. All I gotta do is monkey duct tape that there. Perfect. Well, I don't expect it to, to uh, collect the chips at the, at the cutter any better, um, but it is definitely significantly more rigid and easier to point and have it stay right where you want it. I don't know why I didn't think of using this earlier. It wasn't until a few minutes ago when I was sitting here that I thought of it. Well, I think that's where, about where we're going to end it. Then... Uh, I've had some comments that have suggested dust collection and this is step one. I have another idea of what I want to add to this, but that'll be for another video. So as for now, thanks for stopping by the shop and uh, I'll see you guys next time.